Hello again. This is Michael from TOEFLresources.com and today's video is how to write a high-scoring TOEFL integrated essay. Now this video is somewhat similar to my earlier video on the integrated essay but today I want to give you a few more tips and strategies that you might use in order to get an exceptionally high score on the test. Something like 25, 26, 27 points or more. If you're completely new to the TOEFL or your English level is a little bit lower, you should also go back and watch that original video. It will give you some more broad tips about the test and it'll give you a more detailed description of what the integrated essay actually is. So with that said, let's get started. Uh, the practice question we're going to be using today is from test three, practice test three in the official guide to the TOEFL from ETS. It's the question about the portrait of a woman in a white bonnet, which is a casting doubt type question. I wish that I could give you the lecture and the reading in this video, but ETS owns those and if I publish them, I'll get in trouble. However, the official guide is easy to find online or in your bookstore. So if you do want to follow along with the exact sources, you could easily do so. However, you really don't need the book. You don't need the sources for the purpose of this video. The video is meant to show you how to structure your essay, how to organize your essay, no matter what the question is. The strategies work for every TOEFL integrated essay, not just this one. And all you need to know about this question, I'll give you in the video. So the first thing we need to know to answer the integrated question is note taking. And we need to understand what the actual question is going to be. So here's what you need to remember even before you start writing the essay, even before you start the test. First of all, you need to know that ETS only uses casting doubt type questions these days. This could change, but it seems unlikely. It seems that for the last two or three years, they've only been using casting doubt type questions. You might have read about supporting type questions, or your teachers might have told you about supporting type questions, but it doesn't seem that ETS uses those anymore. None of my students have reported having one of those for years. And not only that, but the TPO practice tests, which ETS sells, only use casting doubt questions. So remember that. In case you're wondering what a casting doubt question is, that's a question where the lecture casts doubt on the reading, where the lecture challenges the reading, where they have opposite opinions. Another thing you need to keep in mind is that there is a mirror pattern in the reading and the lecture. What I mean is the points made in the reading go in the same order as the counterpoints made in the lecture. So for example, if the lecture and the reading are about bananas, the first point mentioned in the reading might be that Bananas are healthy because they contain potassium. The first point, the first counterpoint mentioned in the lecture then will be bananas are unhealthy because potassium causes cancer. If the second point made in the reading is that bananas will make your hair grow back, the second counterpoint mentioned in the lecture will be that bananas will make your hair fall out. So there's a pattern. There's a pattern to it. It's a mirror pattern. And well, that's just what I said. The points and counterpoints are presented in the same order in the reading as in the lecture. If you understand that, 
It'll make your job taking notes much easier. And if you understand that, it'll make it much easier to take your notes and to turn them into an essay. The problem that students have is that many practice textbooks don't show this. They mix them up and they make it harder for the students than it really is on the real test. And then when the students go in and they're taking their notes, they think, oh, maybe they're all mixed up and maybe they don't match and maybe I have to be aware of that. But that's not how it works on the real test. So you should know that before test day. Finally, the last thing to remember is that as you're taking your notes, you should be getting supporting details. What I mean is that the author will make a point. He might say potassium is healthy. The supporting detail would be potassium will make your heart strong. Whereas the counterpoint would be bananas are unhealthy because potassium causes cancer. The supporting detail would then be potassium can cause specifically lung cancer. So you get the point and a detail that goes along with it. You get a counterpoint and a detail that goes along with it. The inclusion of supporting details in your essay is the difference between a low scoring and a high scoring essay. You really want to get those if you need a high score on the writing section of the test. So here are some sample notes that we're going to use throughout this video. These are the ones from the Rembrandt question we're dealing with. Again, these don't really matter because that's not what the video is about. But just to show you, in black, that is the point. That's the first point here made by the author. And in blue, we have a supporting detail. This is the second point made by the author. And in blue, we have a supporting detail. This is the third point made by the author. And in blue, we have a supporting detail. This is the second paragraph of the article. This is the third paragraph of the article. This is the fourth paragraph of the article. And we also have lecture notes. This is the counterpoint, which matches this point, And this is the supporting detail. This is the counterpoint, which matches this point. This is the supporting detail. This is the counterpoint. This is the supporting detail. And again, they come up in the same order. So you can see the last point that the author mentions is about the panels being glued together, the panels on which the painting was done on. And the last counterpoint mentioned in the lecture is also about those wooden panels. They're coming in the same order. I can't stress that enough. You have to remember that they're coming in the same order. So we now understand the question. We understand how to take notes. It's time to write our first paragraph, that is our introductory paragraph. How do we do it? Well, if you've seen any of my videos, you know that I'm obsessed with the use of templates. And by template, I mean a plan, a structure, a sentence by sentence structure for writing a paragraph. A template is something you can use no matter what the topic of the integrated essay happens to be. So check it out. One, two, three, four sentences. Four sentences. Fill in the blanks. The reading and the lecture are both about something, which is fill in the blank. The author of the reading believes that fill in the blank. The lecturer casts doubt on the claims made in the article. She thinks that fill in the blank. These four sentences are a template. This template can be used no matter what the topic is. No matter what the topic of your inter integrated essay is, you can use these four sentences. Here's an example. 
starting with our green first sentence. The reading and the lecture are about portrait of an elderly woman in a white bonnet, which is a painting that may or may not be a work of Rembrandt. Second sentence. The author of the reading believes that the painting was not done by the Dutch master. Third sentence in purple. The lecturer casts doubt on the claims made in the article. Fourth sentence in brown. She thinks that it was, in fact, painted by Rembrandt. And that's it. That's how you do your first paragraph. The great thing about the template is that it allows you to write a sophisticated introduction in a short amount of time. Once you get these sentences memorized on test day, they'll just come out really quickly and you'll be able to write a nice introduction in a couple of minutes. And that will result, I hope, in a higher score for you. There's a few things to remember about your introductions. Um, the template is somewhat long. Shorten it if necessary. If you feel you don't have enough time, you can combine the last two sentences into one. That might save you a little bit of time on test day, if necessary. Finally, uh, the first sentence uses which is. I include that in order to um, show off my comprehension of the topic. But don't use it if it sounds silly. Like if they're about zoos, don't tell me what a zoo is. You don't need to do that. If it's about bananas, you don't have to say the reading and the lecture are about bananas, which are a uh, yellow fruit that grows on trees. Use your best judgment. For low-level students, I just take out the which is part. But for high-level students, I leave it in, and I trust that you're high-level enough to use your best judgment about when you should take it out. So, that's our introduction. Once we've got the introduction finished, we're going to write body paragraphs. There's going to be three body paragraphs, but before we get started, a few things to remember. First of all, write one body paragraph for each point and matching counterpoint. So you write a sophisticated paragraph, which involves the point from the reading and the counterpoint from the lecture. They're combined together. Present the points and counterpoints in the same order as in the sources. So in our practice question, the first thing that's discussed is the outfit of the woman in the painting. So that's going to be your first body paragraph. The second thing that is discussed is light and shadow in the painting. So that's your second body paragraph and so on. Next, the lecture is the most important source. If you're running out of time and you need to shorten something, Shorten your discussion of the reading. Again, if you want a high score, you focus in on the lecture. In the template, I'll show you in a moment, I say write two sentences about the reading. However, if you're running low on time, just write one. Just write one. If you have to shorten something, shorten the reading instead of the lecture. Finally, Many textbooks don't include true integrated writing practice questions and these templates, this video is useless if you're using bad practice questions. Not only that, but the whole textbook is useless if you're using bad practice questions. Um, you'll be wasting your study time. Keep that in mind. I hate to pick on them, but I often do because Barron's Guide to the TOEFL is one of the most popular books it's now in its 14th edition. It's been published since 1978, which is before I was even born, but it's really bad. Don't use it for integrated writing practice questions. I'm going to talk a little bit more about where to get good questions uh, at the end of this video. So our first body paragraph, how do we do it? Well, we use a template. Go figure. There's also a template we can use for our body paragraphs. In this case, it's a five sentence template. 
First of all, the author claims that something. She believes fill in the blank. This point is challenged by the lecturer. She says that fill in the blank. Furthermore, she points out fill in the blank. Five sentences. You can use this template no matter what the topic under discussion is. I promise it'll work. So here's our model. Here's our model. First of all, the author claims that the woman's outfit is inconsistent as it pairs a servant's cap with a luxurious coat and fur collar. Second sentence. She believes that Rembrandt would not have made such a mistake as he paid very careful attention to detail. Third sentence. This point is challenged by the lecturer. Fourth sentence. She says that the woman's fur collar was added to the painting by another artist at a later date. Fifth sentence. Furthermore, she points out that this was likely done to increase the value of the painting. And that's it. How do you fill in these blanks? Well, this is your first point from the reading. This is your supporting detail. This is your first counterpoint. This is your supporting detail. Again, this is the first point from the reading. This is the supporting detail. This is the first counterpoint from the lecture. This is the supporting detail. That's it. That's all you have to do. Next, we write our second body paragraph. And once again, there's a template. The template is structured in the same way. However, I changed it a little bit. Um, specifically, I changed the verbs that we use. So we have suggests, we have rebuts, we have elaborates, we have states. I changed that again to vary our vocabulary and to make our essay a little bit more sophisticated. That sophistication that comes from a varied vocabulary is another difference between a low scoring and a high scoring essay. Here's the model. I'm not going to read this one, but you can pause the video if you want to check it out completely. But again, there's the second point from the reading and a supporting detail. The second counterpoint from the lecture and a supporting detail. And in between here is your transitional sentence. Again, it works. It works. Some people say that templates are boring. However, you've only got 20 minutes to write your essay. Just 20 minutes. You don't have time for a great example of literary academic writing. You don't have time to write a sexy essay. The templates allow you to take that 20 minutes and produce a sophisticated essay which shows off your listening and reading comprehension skills. It also allows you to show off your reasoning skills and your ability to compare sources in an academic fashion. After our second body paragraph, of course, is our third body paragraph, the final paragraph of the essay. Once again, there's a template. To achieve further sophistication, further variance, I've produced a four sentence template this time. The difference is that I took out the transitional sentence and I combined it with the statement of the first counterpoint, or I should say the third counterpoint here. So instead of saying this claim is challenged in the lecture, I used on the other hand, and I put it inside of what we call parenthetical commas. It's a slight change, but again, changing up the template a little bit just increases the sophistication of your essay and hopefully increases your score. But you can use my template exactly. Use it with these verbs. It's okay. It'll work. It'll work. Here's a model. Again, I'm not going to read it, but you've got your, you've got your reason. You've got your supporting detail. You've got your counterpoint. 
you got your supporting detail. And that's it. That's a complete essay. An introduction and three body paragraphs. A few things to keep in mind, as always. First of all, if possible, if you can, write three sentences about the lecture. That means you can include a second supporting detail. Two sentences is enough. Trust me, if you write two sentences about the lecture in each body paragraph, you're going to write a very long quality essay. But heck, if you've got the time and if you've got the ability, go ahead and put in a third sentence about the lecture. Include another detail. It's probably not worth it to include more details about the reading, but as I said, the lecture is the most important part. So put in another sentence if you can. Don't switch to the past tense. You'll notice I say, the lecturer says. The lecturer argues. That's a convention of academic writing in English. We don't use the past tense. We don't use the lecturer stated, the lecturer argued. It doesn't really make a big difference. For my low level students, I don't really care about the tense. But since you guys are high level students looking for a really high score, you should stick with this tense. <coughs> Finally, excuse me, <clears throat> write about 300 words for a top score. 300 words is a lot, but once you get those templates memorized, it'll be easy. You'll be able to do 300 words. You don't really need to write more. I think at some point the law of diminishing returns kicks in, but you should be writing about 300 words in order to get a really high score. Ignore those textbooks that tell you 175 is okay. Ignore those teachers that tell you 200 is okay. For a high score, you're looking for about 300 words. <clears throat> Finally, you don't need a conclusion to the integrated essay, but if you have time, you can include one, something along the lines of, in conclusion, the lecturer effectively casts doubt on all of the claims and theories presented in the reading. Something like that is fine. You don't need to put it in. 99 students out of 100 won't put that in. But heck, if you have the time, if you're done your essay, and you've proofread your essay, and you've still got a minute, you could put that in as a separate single sentence paragraph at the very end. Finally, uh, I'm going to repeat myself. The practice questions in your textbook are probably terrible. Honestly, they're pretty bad. I've reviewed a lot of books. Barron's is bad, but you know, so is The Idiot's Guide to the TOEFL. Uh, the Princeton Reviews, Cracking the TOEFL, isn't great. Uh, the Cambridge Guide is okay, but even the integrated questions are so-so. I highly recommend sticking with the official tests collection um, and the TPO tests that ETS sells, the test practice online. If I remember correctly, uh, in December of 2015, there's going to be a second volume of the official tests collection, which will give you five all new practice tests, which means if you have both volumes, you'll have 10 integrated writing questions to practice with. That's perfect. That means you don't need Barron's, you don't need Princeton, you don't need anything as long as you have those official collections. So that's it. Uh, that's how you do a high scoring integrated TOEFL essay. I hope the video was useful to you. If it was, check out our channel. We've got lots more. There's videos about the independent essay. There's a few more videos about the integrated essay. And if you want more of this stuff, you can check out our main site at tofelresources.com. You can find guides like this in text form, and you can also find a collection of about 50 complete sample essays written by myself, a native speaker, which you can use as you're studying for your own essays. I'll leave it at that. 
But if you have any questions about the essay, feel free to post them in the comments below. I'll answer them as quickly as I can. Take care for now. Goodbye.